Yes. Uh, thank yeah. you very much, Alvin. Did, thank do you, you hear thank me? You. Yes, yes. Yeah. Lama okay. top. Floor is yours. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe before I, I start with my presentation, I uh, just like to give some points, uh, so some comments on the questions that you've asked earlier to uh, to, to Vittorio. Just an update, update also for everyone. So Philippines basically have, uh, through the Bureau of Product Standards, have already uh, adopted this, most of the standards on charging and also on uh, on energy storage. But the thing is, uh, standards is different from regulations. So uh, if you're talking about standards, we have them, but we have not yet adopted them into a mm -hmm. regulation. And uh, I think you also asked the right question, uh, if you have the facilities. So right now, we don't have the facilities to do the testing. And uh, uh, the OSU is, is very much willing to, 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 to look at a possibility, for example, of setting up those facilities, but it's important that they are viable. So. But uh, look, looking at the, the, the local industry, um, if you're looking at uh, type approval, then the demand may not be that big. So uh, yeah, so we thought, okay, let's try to see if we can do, if we can expand this to also okay, do, do conformance of production and maybe that's when we have some economies of scale. Yeah, but anyway, um, uh, that, that is just a segue for my talk. Okay, yeah, so I'll be talking about charging standards. Uh, then I'll be focusing more on EGPs and e-trikes. So I think that's the that's the interest of most of the uh, most of the participants in this afternoon sessions session. And then okay. after that, we're going to look at charging economics, uh, who's charged in what way, and um, what we think what's going to happen in the future for e for EGPs and e-trikes, and then uh, some key points. Yeah. So. Um, we, we have after what we call the three levels of charging. So we have level one, level two, and then we have level three. Um, the the uh, charge rate increases depending on the level. So for example, for level one, that's just for one to two kilo kilowatts. Okay, that is, this is normally the charges to use for your uh, electric uh, electric bicycles. And also for for those of you who are uh, using uh, the, the mini scooters, the, the personal electric scooters, that's, that is normally the type of charger that you use. And then we have the level two chargers around uh, three to 20 kilowatts. So um, some, some of the, some of the uh, electric tricycles that you see on the ground uh, charge at this rate. Um, and some bigger vehicles also charge at this rate. And um, yeah, the third level is uh, if you would look at the, the power uh, ratings there, the charge rates, are, they're quite high. So when you say fast chargers, we're basically looking at level three, uh, level three chargers. So what charger you're going to use? It depends on a lot of factors, uh, but of course the main the main factor is uh, okay, what's what's your battery? What's the what what is the capability of battery? So that basically defines the charger that we're going to use. Then others would be more on would be more on operations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there has always been a talk on what standards Philippines should should adapt. So uh, there is right now uh, Shademo then CCS and then GBT. And then of course we have the Tesla. But uh, for, for this afternoon's uh, discussions, I would like first to set aside Tesla. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's a, uh, there's a, there are ongoing talks right now and uh, not only talks, but also uh, local studies looking at uh, okay, what standard, what charging standard should Philippines uh, pursue? Um, so, but, but the, fir the first question is, uh, why not just adopt any of this? Or, or why not just uh, adopt all? Well, uh, adopting, there, there, are, there are several uh, key considerations. Number one, um, having a multi-platform charging system co costs more than having a single platform uh, charging system. So, and uh, considering that we're just starting everything, um, we, we're in a start, we're in, okay, you invest in a charging point, but the question is, where's your market? So. So it's the cost, the cost component is very important. That's why there's a lot of uh, charging service providers right now that's uh, that, that is advocating that Philippines finally decide what charging system to use. But on the other hand, uh, adopting a single charging system okay, in, in, in a in a um, in 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 a in a country like Philippines, where in there's not much electric vehicles yet, okay, might also on the other hand limit the uh, the type of vehicles that we can adapt. So for example, if you adopt a demo, then, okay, so electric, electric vehicles such as this running on CCS and GBT may, 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 not, be, may not be supported. So, so there, there, there is right now this, uh, this, uh, okay, this ongoing talks. 
and uh, there are there are two road mapping projects that's ongoing. One's funded by World Bank, and then one is uh, funded by the Department of Energy. And both of these studies will be, uh, both of this funding will be looking at the uh, looking at this uh, this issue. Um, for some countries like Thailand, they decided to adopt CCS. But for some countries like, for example, uh, like like uh, India, they they decided to just accredit <coughs> charging standards and let the market uh, uh, define um, define define what what's what standard to to uh, to adopt. Yeah. So so um, um, the local condition is very much different. So we have to look at our own case and then decide for for ourselves uh, eventually. But of course, it helps to also looking at what's happening in other countries. Yeah, a, a closer look at GPs. If you look at uh, the different electric GPs that are offered in the market, so we have in most all of them are now running in the lithium uh, lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries. Uh, so we have in here the more common models, the Gets, the Leguider, Star Eight, uh, then the the, the Toshio Motors um, units. So we have in there the voltage ratings, okay, the battery capacities, and uh, we will see in here this, the, the second of the you know the second of the last column, uh, the type of chargers that you're they're using. So basically, except for gets which uh, could charge as high as forty kilowatts, okay, most of these vehicles charge at either level one or or level two, and some of them could be charged in either 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 way. Yeah. And um, okay, right now most of these vehicles uh, charge. Uh, Charge using a uh, direct charging on the vehicle, while while the units of Tocho Motors uh, does a uh, battery uh, battery swapping. Well, and, and the battery swapping thing allows Tocho Motors to bring down the size of their batteries. Um, vehicle charging, direct vehicle charging, and battery uh, battery swapping provides uh, have their own advantages and um, and 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 disadvantages. And I'll gonna talk more about that uh, in in the next slides. So we have now in here uh, the, um, the a list of the electric tricycles that are being offered in the in the market. So most of them are charged directly to the to the AC plug. Um, but there, there are now a couple of the of the vehicles that do the do battery uh, battery swapping. Um, this could be uh, attributed to how these vehicles operate. So normally they don't really go far. So, so they just operate in an area, so that makes um, that makes battery swapping very, uh, very, very, very convenient. Okay, now, so maybe the question is, uh, where do you save more? Do you do battery swapping, or do you do, or do you do uh, direct uh, direct charging? If you do direct charging, then you need to be able to to charge your batteries fast. So means you have to, to, to do some, some, sort of a, some sort of fast charging. But let's first try to look at what are the cost differences okay, between the, the cost of the batteries that uh, can do fast charging and that can do uh, uh, slow charging. So I have listed down in here three types of batteries. LFP is lithium iron phosphate. LPTO is lithium polymer titanate oxide. And then LTO is lithium titanate oxide. I would want to um, bring your attention to the to the third column, maximum charge, uh, maximum charge rate. So when you say one C, it means that um, you can actually charge the battery in an R. Uh, to, you, can, you can charge it to full to to full, at, at to full levels in one R. When you say four C, so if you charge a battery at, at that rate, then Means that you can bring down your charging time to 15 minutes. So, so the number there is basically something that you divide to, 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 to an R. So, so one over four is uh, 60 minutes over four is uh, is 15 uh, 15 minutes. And if you do if you you adopt let's say lithium titanate oxide, so 10 C theoretically. Okay, I would like to emphasize the term theoretically because uh, okay, although theoretically you can charge it at this rate, normally that is not really uh, advisable. Um, then you can charge it at uh, sixty over ten of a over ten of a of, of a minute. So that is really uh, that is really fast. So the question is why why don't we adopt these things? 
uh, that makes life that, that this this these things would make life very convenient. So by the way, these are the maximum charge rate, and on the left side you have the standard charge rate. So this is what is recommended by the by the supplier, but still, for example, at two C that is thirty minutes, then you get full charge. That is quite fast. So the question now is, why don't we adopt LTE or LPTO, for example? Why do we always uh, settle for lithium uh, lithium um, iron uh, phosphate? Okay, on the far right, if you look at the battery cost per kilowatt hour, so in here, I'm referring to the total amount of charge that may be contained by the battery throughout its life. So that means it's also a function of the cycle life. So by the way, when you say cycle life, it means it refers to the amount of times that you can charge this charge the battery. So say 6,000, you can charge the battery 6,000 6, times, times before it starts to it starts to, to degrade. 10,000, 10,000, uh, you can charge it 10,000 times. 15,000 means you can charge it 15,000 15, times. So if you take that into account, okay, then okay, we now have these figures. So battery cost per kilowatt hour. So for, for uh, lithium, uh, lithium iron phosphate is 2.18. Okay, lithium polymer titanate oxide is 2.78. Lithium titanate oxide is, oxide is 2.74. Okay, uh, they're, they're a bit, they're a bit um, more expensive, but uh, not that much, right? So still, the question persists. Why do we continue to adopt um, lithium iron phosphate? Okay, as I've said earlier, okay, this, this cost is a function of the light. So if you factor in that back and then co compute back the cost of the, the cost of the batteries per kilowatt hour, then that's where now the problem comes. Um, lithium titanate oxide and lithium polymer titanate oxide, for example, could easily cost two to four times that of lithium iron phosphate. So that's where the issue is now. So that's why some of the vehicle suppliers resort to battery swapping. So you charge the battery at a slower rate, but of course we cannot afford the vehicles to be charged to be to be I, I, idle also at that at at the, at the, at, the, at, the, at the time that the vehicle uh, the, the batteries are charging, so we do so we do battery swapping. Now, let's now try to look at the service cost. So um, so we know that if you do slow charging, then um, you end up with a cheaper battery cost per kilowatt hour throughout the life of the vehicle. Okay, but if you look at service cost. It will actually cost you more to charge your battery, okay, using through through battery through battery swapping. So in here, this table assumes that for the lithium iron phosphate, you're charging it, you're charging that uh, that that electric tricycle through battery swapping. So that increases significantly your your cost. Um, and um, okay, doing 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 fast charging drastically reduces your, your cost. So, so why is that so? So if you look at, for example, okay, on, on the lower left, we have a graph comparing the different uh, um, scenarios. Let's first try to look at the two bar graphs. So we have the apex swapping and then, uh, no, not, not, first two, two, not the first two uh, graphs, the, the first and the third, because that is, those are both uh, apex. We have their apex battery swapping, then we have their apex Charging. Okay, if you look at the uh, if you look at the, the figures, okay, if you look at the figures, um, uh, doing direct charging is a lot cheaper. Okay, however, however, if you look at the if you look at the black part, okay, that one refers to the labor. Okay, um, uh, and, and and what I mean is uh, we, 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 we can attribute that to the greater labor cost when you do battery swapping. Because just imagine you have to bring down the battery and then bring it back again. Uh, so that means you need more people to, to operate a battery swapping oper uh, battery swapping system compared to an e track depot charging. So if you have a e track depot charging, you, you bring your e track, e track there, you just plug it, and then that's it. You don't need someone uh, someone to, to assist you actually compared to an e-track swapping but e track swapping um system now you will see also in there that the uh, the swapping of uh of uh, egp batteries are a lot 
cheaper compared to uh, e-trike uh, e-trike swapping. Well, that could be attributed to to the to the the, the bigger the bigger capacity the, the bigger capacity uh, batteries of the, the of the of of um, of EG feed swapping. Because note that this is per kilowatt hour. So keep you, you bring down the battery size, plug it, and then you charge it. Let's say uh, for for uh, uh, to you charge it uh, to to say fifteen kilowatt hour, and compare that as if for each track when you charge it only to around four kilowatt hour. So same amount of labor, same amount of effort. Okay, but okay, this time you're charging it at a, at a, at a greater at a greater uh, uh, amount of uh, amount of uh, amount of energy. So so eventually when you compute, then the cost the cost uh goes down. Now, uh, what happens if you do now EG TPO charging? So if you look at the, fig the, the, okay, the, the figure now, the cost goes down further. But if you do EG TPO charging, it means um, you're, you're going to do it using fast charging. So and fast chargers have cost more than uh, cost more than ordinary uh, than ordinary, ordinary chargers. But of course, you bring down now the uh, to bring down now the labor uh, the labor cost and um, also for for uh, for uh, and okay so those are if you operate your own your own uh, charging systems so what happens if a third party invests on the charging systems um, but but maybe we first first ask a question so why why let a third party do it okay first uh, if you operate your own charging system you have a fleet that means that you're willing to invest on it. And in some cases, it also costs a lot. So that's why in some cases, it might it would be more convenient to let a third party, let's say a gasoline station, operate a, a charging system. And then you just plug it, you, you plug your vehicle there. So which means then that you have to be running at, um, using fast charging batteries. So in that case, um, okay, you will, you'll end up with this figure. It's a bit higher because... Um, then whoever invests on that on that system would have to also to earn. So yeah, so that's where now the profit comes in. So that's why you have the your light the light blue in there for for uh for profit. So so again, uh, why why still use battery swap? Higher cost of fast charging batteries, and in some cases, um, because supplier financial limitations. Why? Because normally what, what, what happens here is, um, I, I don't know if there are some uh, some uh, jeepney, electric jeepney operators in here, in, in this group. Okay, normally, um, the vehicle supplier co-invest okay, in, on, on, on the second battery. And uh, co-invest co, co on the vehicles. And um, okay, fast charging bat batteries are just very, very expensive. So, so uh, and the uh, vehicle suppliers also have limitations. And also very limited operator financial capacity, lack of battery monitor and tracking system, lack of fast charging network, and then technology um, inertia. So we know that okay, it's better to do direct charging, fast charging. It's more convenient. But the question is, do you have the funds to, to invest upfront? So that's why okay, people see uh, a, a, lot, a lot of operations still uh, depend on, on, on battery swapping. Now let's try to look at some business models okay, that is applied right now in, in the market. So I'm just talking about electric cheapness and electric bicycles. Uh, we, we can break the, the whole value chain of electric cheapness or electric bicycle operation into, into, into five. First, we have your manufacturing uh, supply. You have the battery leasing. Uh, you have the vehicle financial leasing, you have the battery swapping vehicle and charging services and fleet uh, operators. You would observe that I separated the battery side because you can actually just buy a, a unit without the battery and uh, without the battery and just lease the battery. So you buy it at a, at a, at a lower initial cost. So let's see uh, who handles what component. So for business model one, you have the manufacturer P1. And then the battery leasing is either provided by P1, also the manufacturer, or 
it is invested on the batteries are invested on by the fleet uh, operate operators but in most cases the batteries are co-invested by both so when the fleet operator buys the unit it, it, the, the operator buys one set and the other set is being invested on by the by the supplier and then and then have it rented by the by the operator and then who funds now the who funds now the purchase of the vehicle? Okay, so we know for for uh, for electric jeepneys, uh, there's an option to get a loan from land bank okay, or or DBP. But we also know that uh, those loan requires equity. And in a lot of cases, cooperatives don't have the capacity to uh, to provide this equity. So that's why also in a lot of cases, the vehicle supplier. Um, handles that equity. So, so what happens now, the fleet operator gets a loan from the vehicle supplier for the equity and it gets a loan from the bank. So that's why you have P2 and P1 in there. P2 is the bank, P1 is the, is the, vehicle, uh, is the vehicle supplier. Then you have the battery swapping or vehicle charging services. So, so who invests on that? So it's possible that uh, if the fleet operator don't have the capacity to invest on the charging services or you know, the battery swapping uh, uh, services, then it's the vehicle supplier that invests on it. But if it, the fleet operator is able, then the, it's the fleet uh, operator that invests on it. Or in some cases, they do a joint venture. Like the one, for example, in Jensen, it's a, it's a joint venture between Tojo Motors and the local cooperative in in Jensen, and uh, that joint venture was also further uh, uh, supported by, by the local government. For business model two, this is a case where in uh, the uh, fleet operator uh, don't have the capacity to go invest in the battery leasing in, in in the battery. So it means that those bat. So if you do battery swapping, then you need to have at least two batteries. So in this case, both batteries are invested on by the by the supplier, so the the op, uh, fleet operator basically just buy the uh, just buy the um, the the unit through a loan, and uh, this is similar also with, with, the, with the previous one, a financing could be provided part could be partly provided by the uh, by the supplier uh, or or and the and and the bank. For business um the model um number three, this is a case where in the uh, fleet operator is able to invest on the. On, on, on all of the batteries, so 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 you, so you, you have that case in there for for business uh, a model number four. Okay, this is a case where in um, uh, the uh, fleet operator have a very minimal capacity to invest on on anything. So everything is being invested on by the by the, by the manufacturer, which also serves as a battery leasing uh, uh, provider. And also self finance the uh, also self finance the, the vehicle and and they have the and also the charging uh, operations and uh, earlier you heard gets so this is a model that uh, the, this this is one of the uh, models that uh, gets uh, offered they don't don't have to invest on anything you just pay for the use of the uh, for the use of the vehicle so gets operates using model number four or model number six. Model, model number five, you have an investor, which also your fleet operator that invests on everything. And then you just have a manufacturer that supplies the, uh, the units. This is the, this is the model of Isakai. So uh, they, they get units from star eight. So star eight is P1, P2 is Isakai. Okay, they, they invest on the battery, they invest on the battery, they, 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 fund the, they fund the acquisition of the vehicle. They operate the charging system. Then they they also operate the the, the vehicles themselves. Okay. So, um, so you would have now in there the charging mode. So some of the operate some of the models operates using battery swapping. Some of the models operate operates on uh, on um, on fast charging or 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 direct charging, and it's strongly related with the capacity to invest. So, so it's the invest is the capability of the different players that invest, that dictates eventually what mode of charging is uh, is adopted and what type of batteries are also used. Uh, if you look at uh, the cost breakdown of uh, of electric chippies, um, 
In normally, the main problem of elect in the long run, you earn. You have there the financial net present value, so it's very positive. But the main issue is the initial cost. You have the investment cost. So, so if we're if we're able to remove that investment cost, that that cost difference, then we can say that electric cheapies could now be could now be uh, competitive. So how do we uh, how do we do that? That's where you know policy to come in to facilitate this business model. So if you look at uh, business model number seven, you have the manufacturer that takes care of its own business. It does not have to to co, -co invest on any of the on any of the other value chains. Because the in, in the Philippines, electric electric jeepney and electric classical manufacturers as SMEs and also have funding limitations. Then you have a third party um, providing the leasing of the batteries. And then you have the, a, a financing, a government financing program that won't require equity because that's the main problem of fleet operators or cooperatives. And that's only possible, for example, if the government guarantees the loan. Um, and then you have a vehicle charging services that could be either operated by the battery leasing company or, or a third party P4. And then you have the fleet operator that just focuses on operating the on operating the units. So in, in okay, this business model could allow now, you, you can now adopt a uh, fast charging with this business model wherein the operator just buys the uh, gets a loan to buy the unit without the batteries. And then since you have a third party investing on the batteries, um, then cost could no longer. And then, and the, that third party has the capacity to to do the investments. Then, uh, cost of the of the batteries, the initial cost of batteries, may not be an issue because that, that third party is a uh, is able uh, is able uh, financially. So you now address the issue of um, initial in, uh, in of, of investment uh, differences uh, at, at the upfront. In fact, you get you're able to get your vehicles at some electric vehicles as a, as a much cheaper rate. Then you do battery leasing, so that is being invested on by P2. And uh, and and yeah, so so uh by, by tweaking who invests on what, then electric GPs now could could be could be attractive. We can also adopt a similar concept for for electric uh, electric bicycles. Okay, the electric bicycles uh right now would cost you around 350,000. Okay, uh, the battery would cost you around 70,000. So removing 70,000 from, from 350,000, that brings down the cost of the vehicle to, to 280,000. And how much are, are the Bajaj uh, maximums here right now? They cost around 221,000. So the difference is not that big uh, anymore. So that is possible if there is a third party battery leasing, leasing company. But of course, that also means that uh, we might have to standardize the, our batteries, the, the voltages of the of our of our e trikes and yeah so that's that's where now also uh, some policy intervention needs to needs to come in because uh, a third party battery leasing company would also in, will only invest if uh, there is an economy of scale and to get economies of scale then their batteries should be adaptable to to most of the vehicles that are running on the running on the ground so so key right. points Fast charging is more economically preferred. Financial and technical people use of the vehicles of foreign operator to face charging strategy in, G in EGPs and in bicycles. And the right business model could sway, um, to, to sway the, um, the, the, the top up mode to a fast charging and the battery cost reduction, mass demand generation, and charging standards are the enablers. Thank you.